If you're nervous, it can translate to the bees. I'm definitely not nervous. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Can you say good morning? Good morning! Okay, it's story time, and it's face your fears time. Oh. When I was about eight years old, I was at a friend's house, we were in the woods, we found an abandoned car. We had been in this car multiple times, and we kept the key to the trunk in the glove box. I was the smallest kid there. There were three of us, my sister, my friend, and myself. And I stepped in the back seat, through the window, into the seat. And when my foot stepped on the seat, I got one bee sting. Our friend realized, I guess, what was about to happen, and she went running. My sister stayed, and I don't remember much after that but I was like swarmed by bees and my sister pulled me out of the window and then we ran back. And they were yellow jackets and I then, like I remember we had this pink scrunchie, one of us was wearing a pink scrunchie and somehow one of the yellow jackets got into the scrunchie. Like I don't even know how it did that. But um, let me just tell you, I never wanted to use that scrunchie again. So here we are. Uh, 32 take away eight. Get ready. 24. 24 years later, we're making ice cream. We've got quite a dance party going on. <laughs> Anybody want some peanut butter ice, ice cream, gelato? So 24 years later, I have gone through times where I am more and less afraid of bees. In my brain, I know that it's fine. It's not gonna come get me, but something, my logic goes out the window and the fear steps in and I start going, no, 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 no. Like, it's okay, it's okay. I usually say to myself, it's okay, it's okay, but then I, I find myself running away mm -hmm. from the situation. So, however, I feel ready to go back and visit the bees. They have a beehive. Um, and I'm ready to do this. I'm excited to do this. Oh boy. I don't know if I'm gonna, I, I'm, I am, I have decided not to freak out. So hopefully I get back there and all will be well. I'm gonna bring you with me. Let us go face our fears. All right, we got this. There you go, chickens. It's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. We're gonna be fine. Ran out of right. We got this. We yeah, totally got this. The bees are kind of far away, and today I've already, I've already used up all of my, my lung gumption. So Amanda has decided she can pull me in a wagon. So we are going all the way back to the bees. Woo! There's a hill, so obviously we're going to ride down the hill. Obviously. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, here come the cows! Oh no! <laughs> oh. Wait, are you in? Oh, I was, but oh. it's making me nervous. I think it's gonna be fine. Oh, oh there's a butterfly. Oh. Okay. That was oh, the best. That was really funny. Oh, okay. You guys, don't forget to make memories today. Hi, big boy. Hi, honey. Leave that hooked on and just step in. Whoa, buddy. I'm on a small person, huh? Yeah, that's the extra small. We now it fits her, huh? Oh, yeah, now it fits her fine. Okay, and boom, 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 <laughs> boom. I don't have model shots in me. We should do a walk away and then turn around and walk towards the. Okay. okay. Need those high heels just and stop. Forty feathers. And walk over. Third method. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm just joking. 
Just lift your veil up and over. Last chance to get your hair out of your face. Okay, we're going back and I am not feeling nervous right now. Okay. Bees. Oh, wow. Yep. Gorgeous. They're just hanging out. There's one flying around your head as they come in and out of the hive. So if you want to step to the side, then, I mean, you're doing it though. You're right yeah. by a whole, whole bunch of bees. I mean, you can hear the action in there. Yeah. It's incredible. Can you give us like the kindergarten version? Okay. These are honeybees. There's more than 2,000 kinds of bees in the United States, but only the honeybees live in colonies and produce an excess of honey. Um, it's as they store honey for the winter and they make too much because they're amazing workers. So all of the bees that you see out here are females and any bee that you see pollinating flowers is female. The boys do very little <laughs> in the hive. There's only one queen and these are all attracted to her pheromone her scent and so they stay with her so somewhere in this box is the queen so because it's a warm day they're out um, let's see sometimes you see them wiggling their bottoms giving off um, an alert that this is where the house is the hive um, sometimes somebody will be doing a little bee dance to show you where stuff is they'd be cleaning the entrance getting any excess water out of the front of the hive like all those sorts of things so everybody has a job. As soon as a bee is born, it turns around and cleans the cell it was in. I mean, they just start working instantly. You're good. It's just saying hello. So they are um, accustomed to the location of this hive by the trees and an internal compass. And so they can be two miles away pollinating flower and come back to this spot. Um, and then what was that? I didn't know about being honey bound. Okay, so up here, this is where the queen lays babies. She can also lay them here. But a, na a way a bee naturally wants to work a colony of honeybees is their babies go in the bottom and then as they move up the frames, they wanna store honey. So commercial beekeepers have domesticated bees to create areas in which we can take the extra honey because they will make too much. Hey, am I good? You're totally good. I heard one around nope, me. There's one flying around your head. Oh dear. But they are totally fine. They're not okay. even landing on you. Okay. And they're not going for your face. If they get aggressive, they'll start bouncing off your veil. Okay. No, you're totally fine. All right, great. Um, so up here are the honey stores. Oh, wow. And we just emptied this top box because they had completely filled it. If we did not take the honey out of this top box, all these bees would have left. And they can at any time. They are not stuck in here. So they would have said, oh, this hive is too small and we're going to leave. And if you ever see like a hive of bees in the news or something like that, that's one of the reasons why they might leave. Like a swarm of bees? Like a swarm of bees, yeah either to multiply their hive because they've run out of room or because they don't like their location, they'll leave. So wow. these bees, um, like that one has its head down in a cell. Um, it's cleaning out or depositing nectar that it collected. Um, scientists are not able to reproduce honey. It has to mix with a certain enzyme in a bee's stomach. Hmm. So they lick up the nectar from a flower, it mixes with an enzyme in their stomach and then they regurgitate it. You are eating bee vomit wow. <laughs> when you eat honey. And then, oh, this one's doing a waggle dance. Um, where, where was it? It was alerting that it had found good honey or good hmm. pollen. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. Yep. It's like vibrating? It's vibrating, saying, look at everybody, and they do a little dance and say, somehow you can tell, they're telling the other bees where there is flowers to eat. Hmm. Incredible. Okay, so, um, This is incredible. I feel pretty calm. Yeah. Unless it's buzzing right here, then I feel like, am I doing something wrong? Is something gonna happen? Here, why don't you do it? Okay. Um, let me tell you what's gonna happen. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to pop open the lid, which sometimes is hard to do because they use propolis or wax to glue everything down so it's watertight. So you're gonna pop it open and there will be a bunch of bees in there. 
okay. sniffing around and getting rid of extra moisture. So you can lift it and then set it back down if you're feeling nervous. But they're, they're just looking around. They're doing their thing. Somebody's buzzing. It's not a problem. Oh boy. Oh dear. Great. Can they sense my feelings? Because um, I have feelings. If you would like to set it down at any time gently, you're totally fine to do so. Or you can totally remove it. They are just sealing up this area because we had broken off the propolis when we harvested honey. Nobody's aggressive. Nobody's coming at you. Nobody's acting aggressive. They're buzzing, but it's not loud considering how they are when they're aggressive. So that's how they get up is in that little hole in the middle. So you're holding a cover, the lid of the hive, and then you've got a cover underneath that and then the honey source. Good job. You can turn it over. Good job. Well done. Oh, great. You did so good. <laughs> Everyone's just calm. Just chill. We're chill. They're chill. So everybody's working up here, cleaning and getting it ready for more honey. And in the front is the entrance. That's where they come in and out. All right, Amanda, for all of my friends who grew up in a city and yes. maybe were never around a farm at all, yeah. can you talk about the job of the bees on a farm? Oh man, it's so important. We wouldn't have fruit without bees. Um, now, so honeybees are especially attractive to farmers because they produce a resource that we cannot produce ourselves, honey. But out of the 2,000 kinds of bees in America, they all are pollinators. So even the carpenter bees, the wood bees that get into the deck, they still have a job. We would, don't want them to eat our house, but they still have the job of pollinating the flowers. So they are taking the pollen off of one flower and taking it to another flower as they go from flower to flower, filling their stomach with nectar. And that is cross-pollinating plants, which has to happen in order to create fruit. Whether it be wheat for flour, that's, a, that's the fruit, the, that's the seed of the plant that has been pollinated by a pollinator, which honeybees are too big to pollinate wheat. You need the tiny ones. Or if it's a strawberry or a cantaloupe or a zucchini or anything, um, we need bees to pollinate in order to make that fruit. So without the bees, yeah. we have much less resources to eat. I think that's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I want you to share about when you got this swarm of bees. Okay. So um, beekeepers in America are losing their hives at 60% right now over the winter. It's due to many factors, um, the pesticides, the different climates, chemicals, all these things. We lost our bees this spring, we think to a disease. So that's devastating um, to find a bunch of dead bees in the hive when you come and check after the long winter. Um, so we thought, let's just take a year off of bees. A uh, short time after that, a friend of a friend texted and she said, I have a friend that has a swarm on uh, the bottom of a tree. Do you want them? She just wants them to go to a good home. And I said, yes. So I went and got my suit on and got a box um, a bee box with frames of honey and pollen in it that we had had left over. And I scooped up these thousands of bees. This swarm was like a foot wide, six inches thick, and three feet high. A lot of bees, maybe 10,000 bees. And I slowly, over the course of an hour, just scooped up the bees and put them in the box. And eventually I got the queen. I didn't see her, but eventually I got the queen because they all started just walking into the box because they want to stay with the queen. And I brought them home and I dumped them into this box and they stayed and I have a queen and these have been super productive. We did not expect to get honey this spring and we got three gallons when we harvested last week. And we, amazing. we were able to do a little taste test of last year's honey, this year's honey. And yep. if you wanna watch that, you can click the link in the description from a few videos ago. It was so much fun. It's incredible that all kind of taste different based on what they pollinate. Yes. So if a certain flower like clover right now is crazy in bloom, it had a real floral scent to the honey. So honey that you buy in the store commercially has been kind of mixed for American taste. So they take honey from different places and they kind of mix it together so that it tastes consistently like honey. But when you have your own hive, you get whatever the bees made and it was delicious. This is so. incredible. I feel calm. Yeah. I hope that this translates to when there is a bee in the house. I'm facing the fears. Good job. <laughs> Put it right up by your face. Good job.
yellow jackets are known for being aggressive and being real territorial, right? But this thing, the, these, she was like, oh, I'm just going to go over there. At all by our presence. That's great. If you're nervous, it can translate to the bees. I'm um, definitely not nervous. <laughs> They're not acting funny at all. They're just chill. We're chill, they're chill. When we first got bees, you were like, nope, never. Nope, nope, really? nope, nope. Yeah, you were like, ah, nope, no, I'm not doing that. Oh. And now look at you. She's a beekeeper, look at her. Ta-da! Wonderful, thank you, thank you. You're so good, face <laughs> your fears. Yes, and thanks for joining me, and as always. We'll see, we'll see you, you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, good night. night.